As you all know, my life has been going through some changes lately, and more changes are on the horizon, one of which will involve moving to Washington State, straight into the heart of one of the cities most densely packed with this social justice bullshit. Now I fully expected to be bombarded with this anti-straight white male nonsense a lot closer to home once I got there, and to have a much more personally invested opinion because of it. But now, months before I even packed the fucking U-Haul, the Emerald Gem of the Pacific Northwest has already given me great cause for concern. The left has been attempting to indoctrinate children into their social justice crap for years now. We've seen the ham-fisted efforts of independent children shows like Queer Kids Stuff and The Birds and the BS. We've seen them use kids for their political agenda, from the hysterics of Greta Thunberg all the way down to the lunacy of the Potty Mouth Princess Brigade. And perhaps most disturbingly, we've seen kids like Desmond here paraded around in drag and celebrated for dancing at gay strip clubs as the left advocates for and encourages prepubescent gender reassignment surgery. But the most alarming instances are when these psychopaths have demonstrated the power they wield within the system itself. Ever since this horseshit ideology made its way onto college campuses throughout the country and beyond, we've been hearing isolated cases of its influence trickling down into K-12 public schools. And we should have known by now that the wind was blowing in their favor in the wake of people like Sidney Chafee, a white, high school humanities teacher who feels compelled to inject her political bias into her lessons and teach her diverse class to filter their opinions through outrage that she prescribes to their race. The kind of teacher who thought that her exclusively black class's time would be better spent standing on a street corner and throwing up black power fists at passing cars for the election of Barack Obama rather than in a classroom and, you know, learning something. She won 2017 National Teacher of the Year for this, and she decided to use that 15 minutes of fame to go on sabbatical and preach her bullshit to other teachers around the country. And now it seems they're gearing up to indoctrinate their first mass wave of future social justice activists. I present you with Bill 5395 passed by the Washington State Senate, a bill mandating, quote, comprehensive sex education as early as kindergarten. They tried pushing a version of this bill less than a year ago, and it was shouted down by parents parental outrage, mainly due to the fact that many parents found displaying sexual content to small children to be inappropriate. Moreover, they objected to the idea that it would make this education mandatory and the brazen hypocrisy of its claim of inclusivity even as it excludes all input that falls outside their ideological box. At some point, the idea was on the table that parents could attend the classes wherein the curriculum is to be introduced. In fact, an amendment was proposed placing very specific requirements upon all schools for disclosure concerning the content of these lessons, the names and contact information of the instructors, the names of any outside speakers, and the right for parents to choose whether or not their child would attend. This amendment was not adopted. In the long run, they favored the idea of keeping parents on the other side of a bureaucratic barrier. As far as I can tell, there will be no content requirements for the school's notification to parents, and their withdrawal will need to be expressed in written form. Granted, the bill does require schools to alert parents to this fact, but it certainly makes it very convenient for their plausible deniability should they choose to file that withdrawal under where the fuck did I file that fucking file. Up until now, even attending a school field trip to the zoo was contingent upon attaining a signed permission slip from a parent. And I imagine it still is. Why is this to be treated any differently? For people who insist on educating young children about the concept of consent, they seem to easily forget that the lack of a no does not constitute a yes. Now let's have a look at what the left actually intends to do with this bill, shall we? They start by talking to kindergartners about the various type of family structures we see in society. And I wouldn't have a problem with this if it weren't for the fact that they are clearly setting the expectation of oppression right away. They toss the concepts of same-sex parents and interracial parents into a grab bag of asinine observations like parents who have different jobs and families who eat different kinds of food, as if they think that's somehow going to make the idea more palatable to these kids. Like they're already expecting children that young to turn their nose up at the idea before they even comprehend it. And in preparing them to virtue signal as early as possible, what they're wanting these kindergartners to take away from this lesson is how to respect different kinds of families. As if the only common sense answer to this question isn't simply to mind your own fucking business. No, instead, let's think of ways to patronize them. Maybe they should dress exclusively in rainbows when they visit a same-sex household. Or maybe they should wear a bindi or a turban anytime they visit an Indian household. Let me tell you, I do come from an interracial household, and I didn't consider that to be any part of my identity as a human being. 
When I was a kid, if I invited a friend over to play and he chose to openly express his respect for the fact that I had parents with different skin colors, I can assure you that he wouldn't be paying my home a second visit. No, on the contrary, my parents would be much more likely to call his parents and ask what the fuck is wrong with him. Even if culture in this country is not homogenous, and nobody is saying that it should be, the basic standard of respect definitely should be. This used to be common sense. Treat others as you would be treated. No more, no less. But now, in Generation Snowflake, this simple understanding has been thrown out the window because everyone has to be special. This isn't how you build bridges, you idiots. This is how you build fences. But it really starts to get objectionable from the second lesson. In an attempt to put parents' concerns at ease, GSHE member Susan Sellers was quoted in defense of the first version of this bill as saying that lessons this early would consist of things like dogs having puppies versus cats having kittens. But in reality, they intend to approach it much more like the song Dem Bones. You know, the foot bone is connected to the leg bone. The leg bone is connected to the hip bone. The hip bone is connected to the dick bone. And the dick bone is connected to the sensitive tip of the dick bone which then connects to the vulva bone, and the clitoris bone, into the vagina bone, and sometimes the anus bone. And by the way, they plan on clearing up the misconception that the dick bone actually has a bone in it, as conveyed by the misleading term boner. Yes, they plan on dropping all of this in your child's lap like a stack of phone books. A child who is just learning about colors and shapes does not need to know the color and shape of your genitals, SJWs. They don't need to know what the word bisexual means before they even learn how to spell it. They have no use for this knowledge. For that matter, neither do older kids, and you certainly don't need to walk them through every gritty detail. We don't teach teenagers sex ed so they can know what hole to stick it in. Instinct and basic communication have solved that problem just fine for the entire history of sexual reproduction on this planet. We teach teenagers sex ed because we acknowledge that they are of the age when the biological compulsion to experiment is going to come knocking, whether we approve of it or not. We teach them so they will understand the potential consequences of their actions and how to best avoid those consequences. Kindergartners don't have that impulse yet, and won't for well over a decade. Teaching them this isn't for their sake, it's for the sake of people like you who are trying to push an agenda on them as early as possible, before they learn how to question your nonsense. Now, lesson three, I fully support. Know to be wary of strangers, how and when to say no, and to immediately report any uninvited, unwanted, and unwarranted touch to adults trusted with their care, starting with their parents or legal guardian. Honestly, this should be the extent of what children this young should be taught. Instead, they're choosing to introduce this after they teach kids how to patronize people who are different from them, and after they teach them the anatomy of human genitalia. And even then, you can be sure that this lesson is nothing more than a gateway to their idea of affirmative consent. By first grade, kids will be taking their first steps into learning that gender roles are to be treated with contempt, that gender differences don't exist, and that gender itself is ultimately a social construct. As they will be reading from My Princess Boy, a story about a young boy who cross-dresses like a princess and generally exhibits behaviors that are only ever problematic when girls do them, all with the approval and applause of his friends, his parents, and every other adult in his life who defend him against anyone who should even so much as raise an eyebrow. Like this is just perfectly normal to see, every day. Further, they'll be learning that the entire world will tell them that they can't do certain things because of their gender, despite the fact that we haven't lived in that world for nearly 60 years, and despite the past three generations doing everything they can to remove the word man from any and all professions. Second graders can expect another lesson on the anatomy of sexual body parts, I guess just in case they missed it the first time, followed by two lessons about bullying, because, you know, sex education, in which children are taught to not stand up for themselves because they may get hurt, it may make it worse for them, and they may get in trouble. To instead tell the person to stop and walk away, as though it will always be that simple, and to tell an adult, because surely that would never make it worse for you. Surely there will never come a day when you are an adult and have to take care of yourself. And among their list of examples, they declare ignoring or excluding someone as an example of bullying, which to me is very indicative of their social justice mindset in not understanding how the world works. Never mind the hypocritically exclusionary mindset of safe spaces. 
Here's the thing, snowflakes. Nobody owes you attention or friendship. It's a cold fact of reality that not everyone in the world is going to like you, and making yourself a pain in the ass is a good way to make sure most people won't, especially when you run to authority figures and force them to accept and include you. You think you're making the world a more caring and inclusive place with this approach, but in reality, by declaring certain classes of people oppressed and others oppressors, and by forcing those oppressors to just accept their condemnation, you are breeding contempt. Here's the bottom line. The only way to truly stop a bully is to stop letting them have power over you. And that includes cowering and running just as much as it includes crying and submitting. And the only way to earn and retain the friendship of others is to prove that you deserve it. Forcing people to comply is not a good way to go about doing that. And whining to authority figures is not a suitable replacement for growing a spine. By fourth grade, children can expect to be taught that most sexual abusers are men while they completely fail to acknowledge that most women get away with it due to society's notion that boys either like it or should, and of course, yet more lessons about bullying. I notice how we're more than a third of the way in, and we've spent more time on this topic than anything to do with sex or gender dynamics. I also notice how not a single one of their example victims of bullying is a white male, and how two of those victims are females that push social justice talking points, namely black girls being bullied for their natural hair and girls in general being bullied for liking science. Like I said, they're setting the expectation of oppression. By fifth grade, 11 year olds will be learning about the contraction of HIV and AIDS and other STDs, including their communication through shared needles while shooting up heroin. By sixth grade, children will be learning that a baby's gender is assigned at birth, not observed. And they will be taught, once again, that gender norms are an arbitrary social construct and not an average pattern of observed and documented behavioral differences between the sexes. They'll also be hearing about sexual assault and rape for the first time, through descriptive scenarios where teenagers are rounding second base. In addition, they'll be encouraged to visit sexetc.org, a website with a tremendous feminist bias where they can read riveting articles like A Crash Course in Gender and Gender Identity, Bathrooms, A Big Gender Deal, Being Transgender is Perfectly Normal, Boxed In by Gender, and Coming Out and Making Safe Spaces at School. And they'll learn that the word straight has negative connotations and is therefore oppressive to gay people. By 7th grade, after putting them through another repeat of sexual anatomy, introducing the concept of oral sex, and encouraging them to discuss sex with each other, the school will now be encouraging these kids to police each other's speech and get into activism. Specifically, activism in favor of talking points on the left. Specifically, activism in favor of feminism. By 8th grade, children will be fully immersed in that activism and made to evaluate their own school for mandated standards of inclusive including, but not limited to, the complete abandonment of dress codes, the addition of gender-neutral bathrooms, the forced inclusion of LGBT topics in all classes and assignments, the formation of gay-straight alliance clubs, the forced inclusion of LGBT students in all sports activities, the forced inclusion of LGBT people and issues in all school publications, the forced inclusion of LGBT teachers among the staff, and the forced inclusion of LGBT LGBT imagery in classrooms. They'll also be made to digest scenarios where teenagers drink and aggressively get handsy, and from there learn about birth control, including an entire lesson on condoms wherein they are compelled to seek out and analyze examples of their use in movies and TV shows. By ninth grade, kids will be knee deep in the gender spectrum. Teachers will be yellow flagging and red flagging verbiage that they deem unacceptable, and they will begin dissociating biological sex from the concept of gender. They will once again be told that a baby's gender is assigned by a doctor at birth rather than observed. They will be taught that intersex conditions are legitimate sexes rather than birth defects with medical complications. They will be taught to refer to people who accept their sex as cisgender, and that gender is ultimately how you feel inside, irrespective of what informs that feeling. They will be taught a version of the word gender that has no salient meaning and no defining characteristics. They will be taught to abandon gendered pronouns, adjectives, and adverbs in their perception of any given person. And they will be taught to calibrate their understanding of gender based on the reality TV show I Am Jazz, about a teenager who disagreed with his gender assignment by the age of three, was diagnosed with gender dysphoria at the age of five, and received gender reassignment 
cabinet surgery at the age of 17. But of course, I'm sure there will be no mention of the medical complications that resulted, let alone of the people who received this same surgery and then regretted it later in life. For the rest of their high school career, they will be encouraged to question absolutely everything about their gender assignment and gender expression as they slide further and further down this rabbit hole of self-shame and existential angst. I was made aware of this bill by my girlfriend. She has a three-year-old boy already in the city's public school system, and she heard about it through the Facebook group for that school. The one who started the discussion in that group quickly found herself silenced and banned for hate speech because she dared to suggest that she, as a parent, is entitled to know more. If this bill passes the house, and I have no doubt that it eventually will, understand that pulling your student from these classes isn't going to accomplish anything. Even if they're not being fed this nonsense directly, the staff will still conduct the rest of the school to operate around it. Your child will still be reprimanded for failing to fall in line, and as much as they claim to be against bullying, you can be sure that your child will be bullied by both students and staff until they start singing the same song. Let this serve as a warning to parents everywhere. This is where it truly starts. This social justice bullshit is coming for you and your children. Some more immediately than others, but mark my words, it will make its way to you sooner or later. I would strongly advise you to stay informed about the goings-on at your child's school and to keep your ear to the ground about local legislature. Because if they can sneak this under the radar, they will. And if we don't keep them in check, their brand of moral authoritarianism will set the tone for our collective future. Thanks for watching guys. If you like what you saw here, have a look at my other videos and leave me your thoughts in the comments. If you support my message, then please like, favorite, and subscribe. If you'd like to help this channel improve, you can reach out to me on Twitter or on Facebook with any suggestions. And if you'd like to support me more directly, please consider following me on Patreon. Links in the description. Thanks again, and I'll catch you all in my next video.